This presentation isn't so much about Key Kids as a whole, but an individual student. It focuses on a little boy who challenged me to dig deeper into certain situations so that I can not only learn about his behavior and possible reasoning behind it, but why and how I react to things as well. So let's jump right in. On my way to WK Elementary, I thought about my identity and how the students may see me. To start off, I would identify myself as a white or Caucasian female. My family and I would identify into the middle class. Growing up, they provided me with food, clothing, shelter, and the occasional vacation. I went to a public school my whole life and had access to subjects and sports that I enjoyed. I grew up in a small town and community where I always felt happy, supported, and safe. I think it was middle school or early high school when we were assigned a paper where we had to identify our social class and the reasons we believed that we fell into it. That was probably the first time I thought deeply about my social class and where my family fit into. Lastly, I am identified as being able-bodied. I have been working at Key Kids since September, so I have established at least the base of a relationship with most of the students. This meant that I needed to think about the students that I don't have as strong of a bond with and get to know them. I was thinking about my identity and how different it might be from how another child identifies, and that's what I wanted to explore. After school, the kids check in. They check into two separate groups. The younger kids, kindergarten through first grade, are in the cafeteria, and the older kids, second grade through fourth grade, are in the gym. I started in the cafeteria and was playing Legos with some of the kids when I heard one of the boys from across the room getting upset. I know that I have to separate my work responsibilities from my volunteer responsibilities, so I calmly walked up to the boy and asked if he wanted to come play Legos. He agreed and walked with me as I asked him how his day was. He told me it was bad, so we talked about how we could turn his day around and we built a tower out of the Legos. I have played with this little boy before, let's call him Thomas but I didn't know much about him, so I thought this case study would be a great way to get to know him and who he is. Thomas is a first grade boy. His mom is Caucasian and his dad is Hispanic, making Thomas a mix of the two races. So far, that is already two different identities from mine, sex and race. I think that by learning about the way that Thomas thinks and reacts to things, it will help me get an insight on possible differences between my future male and female students. When it comes to race, I grew up not being around many people of different cultural backgrounds because of my small town. Thomas having a different racial background than me will help expose me to races other than my own firsthand. Observing him will also give me a chance to see any stereotyping or racial comments made by staff, parents, or other students. Thomas lives in Winona with his mom and his twin sister. He gets to see his dad about once every other weekend but besides that, he doesn't have much contact with him. I am not aware of his mom's exact salary, but based off where she works and an average one-person income, I would say that Thomas's family falls into the lower middle class. This would be different from how I grew up because although Thomas was provided with all the same basic necessities as I was, his family may have to limit unnecessary spending, such as going out to eat and vacations. Lastly, Thomas would also be identified as being able-bodied. A typical day at Key Kids with Thomas looks a little like this. Thomas gets picked up individually from his classroom five minutes after the other students get let out to avoid conflict and stress. I walk to his classroom where his teacher and him greet me with his behavior chart. The chart tells me how he handled his behavior for the day. We then go to the cafeteria to play with the other kindergarten and first graders until it's time to go outside. He usually starts out pretty happy and calm in the cafeteria. Then we go outside. Like the other kids, he loves to play gaga ball. Just like other kids, Thomas also does not like to get out. So sometimes I need to remind him that he was hit and he can get back in next round to try again. This is often when Thomas will get quite angry. This often resorts in Thomas either getting physical or swearing at a staff or child. When these situations occur, I need to remember the difference between me working and me being a volunteer. Oftentimes, before I am even able to think of how to respond to Thomas's behavior, he will hug me and tell me over and over again how sorry he is for acting that way. After observing Thomas, I have realized three main things about him. 
First, he is very quick to act and respond. He doesn't take the time to figure out why he is feeling a certain way or how to fix it. He just reacts. This can be in both positive and negative situations. Second, he is a very caring person. No matter what is happening, if he sees another child crying or looking sad, he will run right over to them to try to comfort them and make them smile. The third thing is that he is very smart and hardworking. Although he sometimes has a hard time blocking out what is happening around him, when he wants something done, he will not stop until he finishes it. I found many parts of myself being challenged when getting to know Thomas. I learned a lot of patience. I've never worked this close with a child who reacts physically to an adult worker when they are upset. By experiencing this, I learned steps to stay calm and remove myself from the situation, and also some ideas on how to calm the child down to avoid further trouble. I was also challenged from time to time with the comment, you just yell at me because I'm a boy and you don't like boys. I struggled finding a way to properly respond to this without taking it personal or getting defensive, but yet to explain why that's not accurate. Two resources I thought of during my experience were both about race. The first one was Revolutionary Talk, Elementary Teacher and Students Discuss Race in a Social Studies Class by Jane, and the second was a video called Race, The Power of an Illusion. The reason for this is based off of my limited exposure to other races growing up in my education environment. I've been around people of many different backgrounds now, but growing up, 95% of my classmates were white. This was a great experience that I believe really helped me see things from different people's point of view, and I'm excited to take what I learned into my own classroom someday. Thank you.